Now, Sri Jawahar Sarkar, your time is five minutes. Five minutes. Thank you, sir. Uh, sir, uh, Mr. Jet Malani before me has described lies as lies, big lies or white lies, and statistics. There is a fourth category of lie that I would like to bring to your attention. Mr. Sarkar, one second. The lie is not allowed in, in okay. Parliament. Uh, uh, modified, sir. But to the extent that I would like my friends in the House on both sides to be aware of the realities. They keep talking about GDP growth. I do not contest it because it is too complicated for many to understand. But what does GDP growth mean where I am concerned and you are concerned? And that is per capita GDP, per person GDP. The GDP of Ambani and the GDP of Adani does not matter to me. The on per capita GDP, we just had the G20 meeting, and there we made a calculation that the US has $63,000 by way of their per capita GDP. Australia has 61000 Indonesia has $4,000 plus per person, and India is the lowest, I repeat, the lowest among the group that has just $2,085 per GDP. So look at realism. Don't go in for bravado and bragging. When you talk of GDP, you must remember that you are taking the wealth of the upper 5% to inflate your figures. I am just giving an example of how the upper crust has increased its wealth. Mr. Um, the Ambani wealth was 1.6 lakh crores in 2014. I repeat, 1.6 lakh crores in 2014. It is 8.6 lakh crores today, five times more. Please show me an Indian who has grown his income in the last nine years by five times before you make further statements. Adani's went up from 1.2 lakh crore. This is more phenomenal, but I will not get into the details. 1.2 lakh crores, they have gone up to 6 lakh crores plus, which is again another five times growth. No Indian has ever gone through this growth during the last nine years. So do not take credit for enriching the oligarchs. Do not take credit for enriching and fattening the capitalist class and then say, we grew as a whole. Now look at your reality. World Bank's unemployment figure. I'm quoting for the World Bank because most Indians and foreigners have given up on Indian statistics. It is so punctuated with untruths. Now, the World Bank's 22, 2022 unemployment rate shows that India is 23.2 percent. Tays with the unemployment. Compare it with Pakistan, a failed state, Pakistan is 11 percent, less than half. Compare it with Bangladesh, once upon a time a basket case, Bangladesh is 12.9, 13 percent, and we are 23 percent. Sharab se dubna chahiye sabko. Bhutan is 14.9 percent. So where are the realities that you are drum drumming about GDP and becoming the fourth biggest and third biggest in the world? Come to reality. We are the annual survey of industries is pointing out that we are steadily moving towards <coughs> contractual labor. We are turning a rightful, respectful wage earner into a product that is at the mercy of the employer with, in so far as labor timing and everything is concerned. I come to the labor participation ratio. The labor participation ratio, the labor minister was here but doesn't seem to be too unduly interested. The LFPR, the labor force participation ratio in India is one of the worst in the world. I repeat, at the cost of perjury, one of the worst in the world. It was 42 to 45 percent was the rate of unemployment of participation of labor. That means the vast majority were outside the network of labor. Masiful rate has gone up to 50% now. 50%, but look at the other countries. Nepal, 83%. Nepal is able to provide 
a labor force participation of 83%. Again, Bangladesh thrice, one, uh, twice more. China, 60%. So what, what are we talking about? I am talking, this one is of course related to the female labor participation ratio, where I repeat the figures. India is only 20.5%, Nepal 83%, Bangladesh 30 plus percent, China 60%, and even Sri Lanka that was on the verge of collapse, they have a female labor participation ratio of one and a half times ours. When it comes to male and female combined, we have been between 42 and 45 percent through the entire regime of the last nine years. Now I repeat, 42 now. to 45 percent, one of the lowest in the world. It has just gone up to 50 percent, just gone up. We look at gender gap. JB already mentioned about the gender gap. I repeat, compare the gender gap of India at 28 percent with double that in Bangladesh. She also mentioned about the rising debt. I repeat, debt is increasing at a phenomenal rate, and we are binding future generations, your grandsons, your sons, my sons, and my grandsons, to a debt that we are not entitled to. Thank you. Thank the you, debt Mr. Sarkar. To GDP your time ratio. Is over. De sir, one more minute. It's no, a debt to GDP ratio has to crossed, you. has come to almost 90%. Sir, just one last word, one last word on defaulters, on bank dif banks, just one word. We were coming around to the banks, defaults of the banks, and there, yesterday's figure, that's why I'm giving it to the House, is 14.5 lakh crores have been written off. Yes. Dr. Karad is sitting there, he insists that writing off means nothing, but I insist that writing off is actually the legitimization of the destruction of your funds and my funds kept in the bank. The corporate sector, Sorry, sir, I repeat I, I before the house, and the I can give the cal calculation. Thanks to the cooperation, thanks to the transparent reply given by Dr. Karad and others, the corporate sector alone has liquidated 10 lakh crores in nine years. 10 lakh crores has gone down the drain to save the corporate sector. Whereas Narega, there was a minister somewhere here who alone Wilson. has destroyed one state. Sleepy Before Wilson. the state, curse him morning and evening. Curse him morning and evening. That. <laughs> Sir, thank you. Sir. Sir, don't direct no, no, it from my it time, is, sir. No, no, Mr.